In this video, we'll look at Mesh Mixer's analysis tools. Let's bring in the bunny. It's a solid file, but it's still useful to demonstrate on. The analysis tools tell you about printability. You want to run a file through these before printing it because it has some real good checks. For example, the inspector tells you where there are unprintable problems, and it tells you with this pin. Now, we can click Auto Repair All, and it will fix it. It may not fix it exactly as we like, but it will fix it to be printable. Or we can click on the pin and fix each problem individually. With a severely damaged file, there would be pins all over the place. Well, it looks like clicking on that pin filled that hole, and it maintained the integrity of the shape here, so all's good, and we'll click Done. Units dimensions tell you the size of the file. It's in millimeter by default, but you can change that to any of these units, for example, inches. It'll ask if you want to convert. Yes, we want to convert. And these are the inches. So if you think better in inches, convert to inches. But before exporting for printing, convert it back into millimeters. And you can change the size by just typing in the text field, and the other fields will adjust proportionately. The measure tool lets you measure between points on the file. Mesh Query gives you information about the mesh. Thickness tells you if the file is thick enough to print. Green means it's thick. Red means there's a problem. Yellow means it's okay. This will probably still print well. It's just that it will be fragile here. And if this needed supports or was to be shipped, it might break during the removal of the supports or the shipping. Strength, again, this tells you how strong it is. And since it's all green, it's quite strong. Stability, that green ball tells you that this will stand upright on a flat surface. And here's the contact area for that green ball. If it was yellow, it would teeter. If it was red, it would mean it wouldn't stand up, which would mean you would probably want to bring this back into the original app and do some adjusting. When you click Orientation, Mesh Mixer finds the best position to print this in. It doesn't always get it right, though, so you want to examine the position that it chooses. And know that it does choose a position based on the position that it starts with. This is all Overhang. See, if I click Overhang here, this is all the area that needs to be supported. And so if I click Generate Support, it will generate that support. And I can finesse this by dragging to make more supports. See if I click, other supports appear. And there I've just removed the support. If you like the tree supports that Mesh Mixer generates, you can always export this with the supports and then import it into your favorite slicer and just turn off the supports in that slicer. When you're ready to export, you can either click Export, 
and save it in one of these files. But here's another option. Click print and then what you'll get is this other field where you can choose a printer to map mesh mixer to. See, and you can add a new printer. If yours isn't on here, you'll need to add the build plate size here. But if you do see yours, for example, if you have a MakerBot replicator, fifth generation, you just click. That maps it to that printer and then click MakerBot Desktop and it will open the MakerBot Slicer. If I mapped it to a Stratasys, it would send it to the Stratasys slicer, which I don't have installed here. And that's an overview of how mesh mixers analysis tools work.